Hello friends, this is Chef Mark and welcome to the spring edition of Colorado's Best Kitchens magazine. Now, our editor, she said this to me, you know, you make all this great food, it looks delicious, my family loves it, but I gotta tell you, I can't eat any of it. I said, what are you talking about? I, 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 I see what you eat on a day-to-day -day basis and it all looks amazing. And she goes, you know, these days I'm eating vegan. And I'm like, what? I, just, this blows me away. She said, it's not because I have any, um, any uh, political stance or anything like that. It really is just because I feel better. And I'm like, okay. Well, and I like, I like the people I work with. And I like the editor. So I said, you know what? Just for you, I'm going to feature an entire meal of vegan food. I'm going to show you that I know how to do this. Now, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you see steak and bacon and pork chops and sous vide and all these wonderful things that I love. I'm a card-carrying carnivore, but not everybody is. So, here's the challenge to make an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert all 100% completely vegan and all extremely delicious so that my carnivore friends like me can also eat the same meal and we can all enjoy a nice meal and some fellowship together. This is the spring edition of Colorado's Best Kitchens Magazine. Stay tuned. Now hopefully you read the article in Colorado's Best Kitchens Magazine, but if you didn't, let me tune you into what I'm doing here. So when it comes to these really bold flavors that I want for vegan food, I visit the, um, the international markets. So I'm making cashew cream as an appetizer, and it's just the easiest thing in the world. What I do is take cashews, which um, I like to find these uh, kind of boiled, peeled cashews, no skin on them. And I boil this with water in a small pot. I've got a chili in there, and I got a couple cloves of garlic, a pinch of salt. And I bring this to a boil, and I just let it simmer. And we're gonna puree this into cashew cream. This is also very nice as a dessert sauce. If you obviously leave the garlic and the pepper out, but maybe add some agave or other sweeteners, um, this is gonna taste delicious as a uh, dessert sauce. Um, almost like a uh, vegan uh, creme glaze. It's wonderful. So I'm going with uh, an Indian uh, um, inspiration here. And I've included in the recipe down below there how to make a nice Indian um, uh, um, spice blend, uh, a curry. But you know what I find works great is these Shan uh, mixes. Uh, this is masala, and it's just easy to pick up a few of these and have them kicking around in your uh, in your pantry because it adds a ton of flavor. Uh, they've done all the work for you, and they're delicious. So I recommend grabbing a couple of these and having them available. And there's quite a bit in here. I probably won't need as much as this container. Uh, has, but I'm gonna start with, oh, I don't know, maybe a tablespoon. You know me, I hate measuring. If you've been watching me for a while, you know, kind of the joke is that I don't, uh, I don't measure. Even when I bake, I don't measure. Okay, so I like that. What I'm looking for here is I'm just trying to get some color. Oh my gosh, the fragrant, beautiful smell is there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this simmer. It's been simmering for about 10 minutes already. I'm going to let this simmer for about another 10 minutes until it's nice and soft. I'm going to pull the majority of the cashews out of the pot. I'm going to add this to a blender, and then I'm going to add that water back in to, uh, just slowly to get the consistency. So why this is simmering, what am I going to serve this with? Well, there's nothing more vegan than a plate full of vegetables, so I'm going to chop those up. But I got some, tip, pardon me, some tips and tricks to make your vegetables mm, a little bit more refreshing and taste better. So stay tuned, I'm gonna show that to you. Celery is delicious, but it can be a nightmare to eat because it's, it's really stringy. So peel your celery, I'm serious. Just peel the outside. Don't go crazy, just enough to pull out this string. This stuff is really unpleasant to eat. You'd be surprised at how much more of a pleasant experience celery sticks are when you go ahead and peel the outside. Cause I'll tell you, now it's crispy and delicious and it doesn't, you, have, you don't have to work to tear it apart. Carrots, using the peeler again, these peelers, you might know, you might remember, they work in both directions. So peeling a carrot should only take you just a few moments. Okay. And a lot of times if I wanna get this end off, 
I don't even use a knife, I just go through and I peel it right off. So that way I don't have to set my peeler down and grab a knife. Save a little step right there. And to cut these, you know, I find sometimes cutting uh, sticks can be kind of a hassle. So if I'm doing carrots for dip, I just cut big old chips like this. Makes great, uh, uh, great, uh, uh, something to pick up dip with. A good, a good handle, that's the word I'm looking for. Cucumber, a lot of times I don't want the seeds in there. So I'll just zip around the outside like so. The seeds are kind of wet, they're delicious. I mean, that's perfectly edible but I think this looks really nice. And again, gives you a nice handle for, for dipping. And finally, our peppers. And I love peppers, one of my favorite vegetables to cut. Cut up bottom and top. I'm not gonna waste these. I'm gonna add this to another recipe. And then my roll cut, so I'm just gonna cut in between the spokes. And then I'm just gonna pull out the whole core in one shot. And just like that, we are ready to finish our cashew cream and have our first dish ready. And I think what we're gonna do is eat this while we're cooking our entree. Yeah, because cooking and eating at the same time, I think that's one of the true joys of cooking at home with friends, is um, just that experience of spending more time in the kitchen, because let's face it, that's where we congregate. Okay, finishing touches on the cashew cream, and then dish number one, done. Spicy and creamy. Just the right amount of salt. This was so easy to make. With a few Latin ingredients like cumin, fennel, maybe cilantro and lime juice, you could make a pretty passable vegan queso using the base of the same recipe. Mm. I think everybody's gonna love this one. For the entree, it's a red curry. Traditionally, this is served with chicken. I'm doing it with butternut squash. But first, we need to dice an onion. Peppers, mushrooms, my aromatics, lemongrass, ginger, garlic, bird eye chilies. Before I show you how to cut a butternut squash, let me go over the ingredients. You're gonna want some brown sugar, some tamari, soy, or coconut aminos. You're gonna want some ball, coconut milk, not fish sauce, sesame oil. Touch of sesame oil, get your aromatics in there. Add your onion, peppers, this sambal or garlic sauce is vegan and will replace the red curry paste. Coconut aminos will replace quite a bit of the flavor lost by avoiding fish sauce. A couple cans of coconut milk. Mushrooms. Let's go ahead and bring this to a simmer. Some brown sugar. A tablespoon or two. These can be tricky to cut, so let me show you some tips and tricks. Cut off top and bottom, and then I separate the bell from the step side here. To learn more on how to cut one of these, click the link below for my YouTube channel. I go into great depth on how to cut the entire butternut squash. You can use a peeler. I find that if you stand it up and use the side of your knife here, it's 
it's much easier to peel with a knife. Then I'm just gonna cut some planks. Now, here's a very important tip. If you cut in this direction, this is much smaller than if you try to cut, let's say, like this, where you're fighting the entire surface of what you're cutting. So always try to take advantage of the slimmest side possible so that your knife will glide right through. Even something really kind of big and tough and notoriously difficult to cut like a butternut squash is a lot easier to manage if you align your food in the right direction and then use a knife that's big enough. Um, I always use these excellent Vustoff 10 inch chef knife. Uh, really makes short work of uh, virtually anything including big tough vegetables like a, a butternut squash. I'm gonna add this to the pot. You'd be surprised at how quickly these cut uh, cook um, in a stew. If you roast this, you're looking at 35, 45 minutes, but if you add it to a stew, they'll cook in 15, 20 minutes. And then the moment these are cooked, we're ready to eat. For dessert, this one, I got covered. It's my vegan chocolate tart. This is a no-bake crust. I have uh, almond flour and coconut milk, which I um, blended together with a little bit of cocoa powder to give it this appearance. Press it into a pie shell uh, and just let it, uh, let it set. This bottom is removable, making it easy to pull apart when this is done. Now for the filling. Here are the ingredients, a can of coconut milk and some coconut oil, a cornstarch slurry. So I'm gonna mix this with a little bit of water some vanilla, some sugar, some chocolate. No, 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 I got this one. This is, I went to the Mexican store and I got the, the Mexican chocolate. There's no dairy. This is that, that very, very bitter chocolate. You can't, can't fool me twice on that. Almond flour, and finally, a pinch of salt. You might also note that this whole dessert, it's also gluten-free. Okay, my filling is ready. Let me pour this into my shell. Beautiful. Now I'm gonna let this set in the refrigerator to firm up. A couple hours or even overnight. We're going to share all of this food with the Colorado's Best Kitchens magazine staff so they can see what, what magic I was able to work, what mistakes I was able to avoid, and what I learned, where I drew my inspiration. I've got one thing left to do, and that's to taste the Thai curry and let you know how it turned out. This looks great, I love the color. I will tell you, when you cook those aromatics, your kitchen will flourish with these wonderful smells. Don't get too close, I recommend opening a window because they can be pretty intense, uh, the lemongrass and all those flavors sauteing on that hot oil. Okay, about 20 minutes for the butternut squash. I tell you, it looks beautiful. It really does look like the star of the show. Perfect, you don't wanna overcook the butternut squash. It should have a nice firm bite to it. The sauce is really nice. Mm. 
I might have added a touch too much brown sugar, but that's okay. It should have some sweetness to offset the spiciness, which it definitely has plenty of. How am I going to serve this? Over rice, and then at the end, you want to sprinkle chopped scallions, Thai basil, cilantro, mint, any of those, ooh, spicy, any of those are going to be lovely on top of this. Well, friends, on behalf of Colorado's Best Kitchens magazine and myself, Chef Mark, thanks for tuning in. Hope you're enjoying the magazine, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. That's important for us. Click the like button. Why don't you leave a comment? Let us know what you think. This is Chef Mark. Thanks for tuning in.